What I wanted to start with is the article that Tom Hartman wrote, but it actually has an accompanying video, Nick. And the overview, now the title the of title? the video, <laughs> yes. Sorry, go ahead, CJ. You, is you, you democracy, no, no, go ahead. Is democracy so <laughs> fragile <laughs> that so a funny. vote for Cornell, that's spelled wrong, it should be one L, <laughs> West is literally risking fascism. This is so, where Trump derangement syndrome has taken over. Go ahead, Nick. So essentially what you're saying is, is, is an, uh, if you think that is true, that once again, this is the most important election of your lifetime. Like we survived Trump before. Joe Biden is a fascist. Joe Biden has the, mo has the most fascist tendencies when you see how he is commanding and the Supreme Court called him out for this. He's, he's commanding Facebook and social media companies to censor Americans. Their uh, Twitter files revealed that the Ukrainian government was giving the Biden administration order to censor their own their own citizens. Ridiculous. So when you use the term faction, fasc, fascism, I try not to use it on every occasion because there are people that overuse it, like Tom Hartman. So if you are making the claim that Trump is a fascist, Without saying that Biden is a fascist, you're watering down that term. You're you're dumbing down your audience, and you're promoting deeply unserious rhetoric. So the answer to this question, is, before even watching the video, is we already live under a capitalistic, fascistic, imperialist country. So why should we be invested on who wins between two corrupt, warmongering oligarchs? That should be the absolute least of our concerns because Me, the outcome will be least. exactly the same but let's continue y'all that's my preface but go ahead no great uh preface let's uh let's listen it's literally it's not even a five minute video so let's listen vote for cornell west and you know th there's these uh, this meme that is being promoted uh, one of the major uh sources of promotion for it uh, nowadays is a Re reason magazine you know the the, uh, the Koch brothers uh, started this thing years ago. It's kind of the, the voice of the libertarians. Uh, not so much the magazine itself as the, the people who write for it in the media. And, you know, they're promoting these ideas of, uh, I, uh, I want to vote for the person I like the most, not some party or candidate that I only half agree with, or you're just trying to get me to vote Democratic because you support the corrupt party, or people in France and Israel can vote for anybody they want. Why can't I? And it's just, you know, people don't understand our political system. Now, first of all, if you don't live in a... So let me pause it here yep. because this is such a establishment response to workers saying, fuck your candidate. Is that <laughs> you dumb peasant obviously don't know what's happening here. So let me explain it to you. It can't be the fact that, no, I understand exactly what the result is of me voting for Cornell West. And I'm telling you, I don't give a fuck and I'm still voting for Cornell. That can't possibly be it in their mind. So it, so his article is from the point of view of, let me explain how this actually works mechanically. This, is, ahead, what, Nick, you're gonna this is what no theory does to a motherfucker. <laughs> the entire professional managerial left reads nothing, studies nothing, studies no history, reads no marks, reads no intelligent organizing theory at all, because I just explained to you our theory of change. I'm glad I did before you played this video regarding our mutual aid and the importance of building a socialist third party, which every single Marxist advocate for, correct? He says, you guys don't understand the system that we are in. And I'm asking you guys, how did this mind frame benefit us? Isn't that the question I always ask? You know, it's how he never asked that question. How does my mindset benefit the workers? The mindset that benefits the workers is it does not matter what system I am in. I am going to operate and I'm going to move in a way that benefits me and my community. And if the system in the way, we must resist it. That's the mindset of the worker. Well, that way it should be. But the professional managerial class left like Tom Hartman, he wants the workers to kneel and bend to the capitalist corrupt institutions. You can't, the system doesn't allow you to be a socialist. So stop being a socialist. The system doesn't allow you to be anti-imperialist. So stop being anti-imperialist. It is weakness and it is surrender of the highest order. 
And do you guys see why these people are the number one enemy of the workers? You have the people that wage an offense against us, and you got people like him that shine sheep herd workers in the worst possible strategy and scenario to fight against our oppression. It's actually quite dis disgusting. But let's continue, CJ. Let's continue. Swing state. Feel free to vote for Cornell West. Let me back up a few seconds. It feels like that last CJ, word was CJ, cut CJ, off, and it's important. CJ, to the I want point to that read this I don't, I didn't, Go ahead, CJ. If you, I'm gonna read this comment because I didn't know this, but this goes to the Kyle and uh, Jimmy Dore video. They pretend that Jimmy changed, right? Meanwhile, they made the most obvious aggressive changes. And this guy, uh, this person, Curry, says, in 2012, Tom, Tom Hartman was advocating for a third-party debate on RT America. Now that explains why I used to watch him, because I, I don't, I'm not too familiar with this guy. But isn't that, so you see the blatant change there? Yeah. And they think, and they think, they're, yes. they, they think they're slick. How do they rationalize this? It's beyond me, but let's continue. That's a great comment. Thank you. I didn't know that before. But, uh, thank you. Me either. I, I didn't know that part too. That just makes it does make sense though. Why, like this is not the same person I used to listen to. Like he hasn't been the same person for several years. But let's listen. Now, first of all, if you don't live in a swing state, feel free to vote for Cornell West. I mean, you know, it's I, I, I realize some people will get upset with me for saying that, but you know, in 2000, I lived in Vermont and I voted for Ralph Nader. Um, there was no way that Vermont was not going to vote for Al Gore. And so we have a winner-take-all system. And so, you know, if you're in a solidly blue or solidly red state, your vote for president, you can, you can afford to cast a protest vote. But if you live in a swing state... Bam. So I once again... such a problem with the term protest vote because you're saying without saying it, this is not a democracy. In a democracy, it's like there is no there. such thing. Yeah, it's no such thing as a protest vote. Go ahead. Like I we said this before. You can tell someone's a shit lit when they use the term protest vote and when they use purity <laughs> test. <laughs> yeah. What's the opposite of yeah. purity? Impure. So they're mad because we're complaining they're impure. That's that's what, what they're saying when they say purity test. And it's not a protest vote. And, and once again, these people are meant to lead leftists and workers off a cliff because our goal, as we explain to people, which many people in professional managerial class either don't know or they pretend they don't know. The reason why you vote for third party is to help them get to 5% federal funding. Technically, if they get to 15%, they're allowed on the base. We know that that's not going to happen. But imagine what the movement would look like if you had 15% fucking support. <laughs> Nigga, you ready for, to change the system, right? But just getting to 5% is important because we need federal funding. So how does that serve our movement to divide our fucking votes? We need everyone to vote because getting the five percent is going to be a hard challenge. We can't have people in red states and blue states. Sit, I mean, uh, swing states sitting out. No, that's absurd. That's going to be that's that's an obstacle for us getting to five percent. And they know that. You get you think I'm smarter than these people? He been doing this shit way longer than me. I've been doing this for two years. They know. But that. think about. But think about, Nick, anybody who's saying that is not a person who's part of the Green Party, unless you're Howie Hawkins. Anybody who's saying that is not a person. You notice anybody who gives that advice is always a person who's for the Democratic Party. So why are we taking it? Why is us as Green Party voters? Why are we even taking advice from people like him and Kyle who are Democratic voters? Exactly. It doesn't make any sense, but go ahead. We can continue. Okay. Uh, video. There we go. A protest vote is actually a vote for the Republican Party. A vote for Cornell West Jesus. is a vote for Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis or Chris Christie or whoever. So in his article, and we'll get to it in a second, he breaks down. It, it, it's really... For me, only because we know this, it's patronizing to read the article. Like, I know all of this technical stuff. You're trying to make it seem like, and then the Duvrigier's du Law, I know you've heard of that. This is something that the uh, uh, first passed the post voting and Duvrigier's Law are the two things that he tries to go over with 
yeah. as basically saying you're going to be giving your vote away. That's not how democracy works. Yeah, but I read, I read the article. I didn't read the whole thing. I skimmed maybe to like seventy percent of it before I, I rage quit. Um, but this video is really <laughs> good because uh, the, the video is really good because if you haven't read the article, what he's, do, what he's doing is he's performing his article. Right. Everything's, Right. Everything he said, at least the first 90 seconds is exactly in the article. That's why exactly I think the video in the article. Is, is good to cover as well. But let's continue. CJ. Yes. Yeah. So most of the article we're not going to read. I'm going to I'm going to go to specific parts and points on what. Yeah, but, sure. but like you said, this video, he's acting out like these yeah. phrases is actually in the actual article. Yeah. Every single exactly one. Yes. Yeah, so so let's listen. Whoever ends up being their nominee, I'm betting Glenn Youngkin, but I, I'm an outlier in this regard. Why is that? Why is it that in France they have a dozen political parties that are all seated in, in the parliament? Uh, why is it that in Israel there's a dozen political parties? I, I don't know it's exactly 12, but you, you get my point, uh, that are all seated in the Knesset. Why is that? Because they have a system that we don't have. In 1789, we started our, our democracy. It was the very first one. Yeah, because France asked a nicely. Huge experiment. And <laughs> they're like, they're like, these people don't have to, their government is different from ours. Yeah, because because they they surely asked nice and they just gave it to them. No, these these governments protest. They demanded more from the government, and Tom Hartman does not want us to do that. But let's continue. The founders had no idea exactly how to do this. They 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 invented it as they were going along, and so they came up with winner take all, first past the post elections. There we go. <laughs> There we go. That's what Kyle, you notice Kyle just started saying this. How come first past the post voting has been <laughs> yeah. going on for decades, but now we're just now starting to hear about this as a reason? Literally, did you think about it? Had, did you hear about this as the reason 2018? I didn't. You know, I didn't I hear was, about I this say, as a reason. I, I, I will say this, because I, as someone who's been, I, this is not my first rodeo. <laughs> I heard people use this first pass and post thing before, but it came from the hardcore Hillary Clinton liberal wing of the Democratic mm. Party. So to your point, you're right, CJ, but to your point, it's very telling that these quote unquote progressives are now using the talking points that people used to use against them. So they, they just straight up adopted Democrat language. That's why I told you guys they are Democrat operative because, as I said, this is not my first rodeo. I'm like, you niggas sound like the liberals that used to fight against me in 2016 now. But let's continue. You know why I think it's more prevalent, Nick? It's because, or it feels more prevalent. It's because, and two reasons: because we have court, we have Cornell West. Like, there's real a real possibility um, of what they believe happened in 2016, which a Green Party sort of taking votes from their quote unquote candidate, that's a real possibility. So they're kind of leaning on this because if you think about it, Nick, these same progressives have been virtue signaling to us more radical leftists. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I'll be down yeah. for Green Party. I'll be down for yeah. third party. But you know, we, we got to build it up. They've been lying to us this whole time, but now we Absolutely. have a candidate and a perfect storm, Nick, where now it's like, you said, now what's up? But now they're backpedaling. Now they're yeah. double backing on their third party. This guy did it as the, as you, as it pointed out in that in that uh, comment, and and uh, uh, Kyle Kalinsky did it. So um, let's get back to the video. But sometimes it's called majoritarian or plurality uh, yes. elections. We know and, what you know, it is. You fuck. Whoever gets the majority of the win of the votes or the plurality of the votes becomes the becomes the politician, and whoever doesn't is out. In a parliamentary system, which was, by the way, proposed by John Stuart Mill in 1861, which is why all these other democracies have this, because most of the democracies in the world didn't come about until after the Civil War. There were only five democracies in the world at the time of the Civil War. And you know the civil war, the, the all of Europe was holding PLC their breath. Saying, Is democracy going to fail? It doesn't matter. Like what? <laughs> like this, this yeah. ton of filler bullshit that has nothing to do with the core argument. Like he's he trying to hypnotize you. Talk now he's talking about right. history. Like what, what does all this have to do with your core argument that voting for a Democrat is a waste of your vote? Like he's like yes. he's, 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 he he starts talking about history. He started bringing yes. he, you know it actually. Like and he do he trying to hypnotize you. And people do that shit all the time. It's it's very hard for me to listen, and we don't yeah. do that argument. And I'm sure there are a lot of PMCs that had a hard time listening to us. 
they view us they see us as very annoying to listen to because we don't do a lot of PMC bullshit that they right. seem to enjoy. But anyway, let's, let's continue. I was just no, Marianne more. Williamson. I noticed this. Yeah. Marianne Williamson does a lot too when she when she answers questions. So and so back in and she does yeah. this too. It's very annoying. And I've said it in the in the video too. I think we both have made comment on. Yeah, I was just getting annoyed. That's that's my point. Let's continue. I was just getting yes. annoyed listening to. And you. that's what it, the feel of the article. That's why I didn't want to read the entire article because the article gives you that same feeling. It's like, dude. Yeah, Why they all do it. Talking about all this shit, man. This is too much, too long about shit that, that is just obvious. Yeah. And when it didn't fail, that's when European countries started adopting John Stuart Mill's proposal for proportional representation, which is if your party gets 12% of the vote, you get 12% of the seats in parliament. If you get 2% of the vote, you get 2% of the seats in parliament. Parliament. If you get 35% of the vote, you get 35%. And what ends up happening is you have you know, coalition building and, 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 and that sort of thing, you know, it's a, but we don't have that here in the United States. So we don't have that luxury. So, you know, respectfully. And, uh, you know, so this is too bad. To Oops. So I guess, I guess we can't do anything guys. Pack it in. Pack it in. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, these people call us the nihilists. CJ, fam, uh, <laughs> these people call us the defeated. Uh, We're the nihilists, and these people are like, man, come on, man, the system won't allow left socialist movement to exist. Pack it in. But we're the negative <laughs> fancy. We're the nihilists. This is unbelievable. But let's continue. Or if you want to, unless you want to chime in. No, it's about to end. It's about to end. So I'll let it finish out. If you'd like, but respectfully, I would say if you live in a solid red or blue state, do what you want, because odds are your state is going to vote solidly for, for this is for president is going to vote for a Republican or a Democrat the way it always has. But if you live in a swing state, please stay with the Democratic Party this time around. And please. If you're not happy with the Democratic He's Party, begging you. it's too corrupt or too sclerotic. He's literally begging you, but let's continue. Yeah, listen to this last part here. And if you're mad at the, something about if you're mad at the or if you're let, let, let me just let it play. Please stay with the Democratic Party this time around. And if you're not happy with the Democratic Party, if you think it's too corrupt or too sclerotic or whatever, get inside it. Join the Democratic Party. Become a member oh, of the party. Jesus Become a Christ. precinct committee person. Push them to change. You can volunteer. It's a wide open organization in most states anyway. This motherfucker. Man. And you can just you know walk in and say, I want to be part of this. I want to help promote my progressive values and change the party from within so that other progressives will be enthusiastic about voting for it. This is the only way it happens. By the way, this is no, what the Republicans No, no it's not. <laughs> the this, you, you notice how they say, they, they say, they say facts that are not in evidence, as, as they would say yeah. in order law, meaning that you're stating it as if it's a the fact has already been stamped a fact. Uh, this, this, this is all that we can do, guys. This is it. That's that's yeah. how they state it. And it's it's not all that you can do. It's all that you can do if you don't want to hit the streets. It's all that you can do if you don't want to do direct action. It's all that you can do if you don't want to organize with the working class. It's all that you want to do, Tom Hartman, professional managerial class, but Go ahead with that. Oh, I thought you were going to read I'm gonna let it. This is like literally one of the first times I heard this dude speak because I don't listen to his show at all. Uh, but I'm going to let it finish because this motherfucker just pissed me off. I'll let, I'll let it finish Yeah, he's first. terrible. Movement or 2010 when they started the Tea Party movement. The right-wing billionaires launched... Wait, let me... I didn't catch that last sentence. Let me rewind it just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah you want to yeah, go back a little bit. Yeah, I can go back a little more. Yeah, because yeah, we what he says about through. the Tea Party. The Tea Party thing, yeah. And change the party from within so that other progressives will be enthusiastic about voting for it. This is the only way it happens. By the way, this is what the Republicans did back in 2012 with the Tea Party movement, or 2010, when they started the Tea Party movement. The right-wing billionaires launched a movement to get conservatives, or what they call conservatives, I call them reactionaries, to take over the Republican Party. And it worked. They did it. They now control the Republican Party, for better or for worse. We need to take control of the Democratic Party, and that's how they do. We'll be right back. Hey, what I, people I wanted, like him? Go ahead. No, go ahead. You can go first. Go ahead. I, I wanted to hear. I want to let it finish, but um, like that literally is extremely. That's infuriating. To listen to fam. 
Like, do you guys understand why RBN is this now? Listen to this weak beta cuck motherfucker. <laughs> Listen to his weak fucking pathetic beta male bullshit that he pushing on the left. Why why do you think there's this, this attitude that the left is weak and filled with soy boys and shit? Because he is. Thank God RBN is this. Thank God rugged motherfuckers who 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 relentlessly advocate for the workers like me, you, and Rome is this, and our allies, Comrade Misty and many others, this, Sabi, Sabi, JB, and others. This motherfucker is a weak beta cuck. That is, he, his goal is to turn the working class into a bunch of weak beta fucking slimy motherfuckers. Oh, the system won't allow us to do this. First past the public. This motherfucker is weak. Do I even need an intellectual <laughs> argument? Like, I'm literally upset listening to this shit because this is the professional managerial class left we've been talking about. Why do you think the left in this country is so fucking weak? In China, weak. they retire at 54. You guys know that? You guys know in China, their rent is 70% lower than ours. The average rent in China is 400 to 500 bucks. In, in Russia, they get 180, uh, they, they get way more uh, maternity leave. They get 180 days paid maternity leave in Russia. Way more vacation time. Zoya tells us this all the time. It's crazy the worker rights they have in the quote-unquote authoritarian Russia. You know why? Because Russia left. the Russian left is now made up of weak beta cucks like Tom Hartman. <laughs> His job is to turn the left into weak motherfuckers. I'm sorry. This is not an intellectual argument. Because I'm, I'm hoping I'm explaining to you why I'm upset. No, because you to your point, you Nick. Go, sorry, go, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, that's what we have. That's what we have a lot of these sort of, what do they call Bernie Sanders, but a cook. But a lot of these, it, it's the whole, their vocabulary, it's very like just weak. Marianne Williamson, what do we say? You're, no you're not man. strong enough for this moment. It's this weak sort of uh, people, this group that's running the left, that is the mouthpiece for the left, that has the mic. That's that's speaking to the left. These weak motherfuckers, these weak people. So imagine. Indeed. So what are they? When are they going to ever say let's hit the streets? Never. They're never gonna. They're never gonna say that. So what has to happen for you to say that, professional managerial class? Nothing. Do do you have to be out on the street? Do you have to be unhoused? Do you have to not have, have health care? Do you have to be living under a part-time state like you the five millions? He's worth five million according to a super chat. I saw once again. I don't know that much about this guy. That's why I'm infuriated because I'm learning. I learned more about Tom Hartman recently just because this article and a few takes he had. I seen. I never actually seen his videos. Like I see. Yeah, this, he's, and like, this, he's been around this, this for a, a while. He's letter. been around for a while. Yeah. Um, and this I just got this from the super chat. Uh, thank you, Jay, the informant. Uh Tom Hartman, Tom Hartman network is reported at five million. He's happy. That's why he's allowed to be a weak little fucking spineless fucking insect that's, that tell workers to just stand down and take it. He told he told you to bend down and fucking take it. Joe Biden is funding ICE to historic levels. And there's a report I'm going to cover some, whenever I get a chance. I got so many stories I got in backlog. Yeah, there's a, there's a, a story where ICE, there was an investigation. They have a brutal, inhumane treatment under Joe Biden, just like under Donald Trump. And it's a new investigation investigation that just came out that exposed Joe Biden. Tom Harmon's response to that, and he wants you to say, you shut the fuck up and take that. Yeah, you're not going to change that between the two-party system, but I don't give a fuck, and you should shut the fuck up and just accept what the government take, gives you. It's And, and, I, and, I, and I, I say this because I talk to many leftists in the global south, but I had the privilege of knowing Josana, Claudia, and a bunch of indigenous communist uh, Brazilians. And I'm going to show you in my Maui segment uh, that Hawaii uh, uh, um, revolutionary. Uh, I'll play a little bit of clip of her later, but she will. she's going to scare the shit out of professional managerial class because she's advocating for her people. She's not advocating for weak-ass bullshit. She said the United States is our enemy, and she's fighting for her sovereignty, for her people. Because the, the, the Hawaiian government paired with the United States is an oppressive monster that had their boot on their neck, and we have to fight them. Meanwhile, Tom Hartman wants these Hawaiian protesters to shut the fuck up and take it. Oh, come on, this is the system you're in. 
So every single leftist in the global south, whether they're socialists, whether they're anarchists, no matter where they lie on the spectrum, they look at the United States left as a fucking joke. Are you guys okay with that? I'm not. I'm not. I, I'm offended and I'm so tired of Tom Hartman's and Cal Kalinske's making the United States left a joke. But let's continue, CJ. Yeah, and a lot of the, like like we said, a lot of the video um, covers is literally like the article. So we're going to skim past a lot of this um, and, and down to this part here where he kind of yeah. sums up the argument. He does make a couple of more points, Nick, that he does not make in the video that I'm sure will uh, trigger both of us. So where's that marking point here? He talks about Jill Stein being and he, the way he refers to Jill Stein. Where is it at? Here, like he's progressive. Look how he describes Jill Stein. Jill Stein had no such moral compunction with her Green Party candidacy. Like it, it like. So let me re, let me go back a little bit so to give you a little bit more context. So let me go back. It strains credulity to assert that the majority of Nader's voters would have either voted for Bush or not voted at all. Which is why when David Cobb ran for president on the Green Party ticket in 2004, he explicitly told people in swing states, you brought this up a couple of streams ago, I remember, not to vote for him, but to cast their ballots for J John Kerry. So he's saying that's a good thing. And then he says, Jill Stein had no such moral compunction, meaning it was a moral thing for the sellout David Cobb to say, vote for John Kerry. That's, that was moral. Not being a sellout, that was moral. But that's how he refers to Jill Stein. But let's get to the part that I want to uh, start at. And as you can see, this is a very long article. Okay, so here it goes. Right. Give me a second here, Nick. Okay, right here at the national level. All right, so let me blow this up. So this is at the very end of the article. Um, like I said, if you want to go read it yourself, you can go read it. The video pretty much covers a great, a, a good majority of, of this article. Sorry, everybody. All right, so here we go. At the national level, though, the best way to solve the problem of some Democratic politicians, get what he said, some Democratic politicians uh, not being as progressive as we like is to get active by joining the Democratic Party, Nick, and becoming a force for we, positive change within it. Go sorry, ahead, CJ. But you guys see how they are, they never learn from the mistakes. That's their job. Their job is never to analyze a previous event and take a lesson from it. So he's saying what we need to do is to organize within the Democratic Party. Fam, what have we done since the start of 2015? I tried. I literally did more for than most people did for the Bernie movement. I'm a very scientifically minded person. I tried this. I tested the variable. And then when it failed, I moved on. Here's the facts, fam. Ever since the start of the Bernie movement, the Democratic Party and the progressive movement has shifted to the right. Yes. The environmental crisis has gotten worse. We are further away from Medicare for all. The police state is stronger. The military industrial complex is booming. If it was the exact opposite, fam, I probably would have a different take. See, imagine if since the beginning of the Bernie movement, we got Medicare for all. Imagine if student loan debt would cancel since the beginning of the Bernie movement. Imagine if a few wars ended because directly because of their influence, right? Imagine the, the apartheid state of Israel was funded less. Imagine if the police state was funded less. I'd be like, man, this, 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 this movement, this uh, strategy that we that we attempted to take over the Democratic Party, that's a great. It was a great idea, but it, that's the exact re opposite of reality. Opposite. That would opposite. that would mean to be a scientific leftist. <laughs> that would mean to be intellectual when you're pursuing a movement building. If that shit worked, I'll be knocking on doors for Neil Turner right now. But that shit does not. So I moved on, and now I'm into some more revolutionary shit that has been proven to work in countries like Cuba and many other revolutionary movements. Being with CJ, let's continue. 
I'll start here. As we like to get active by joining the Democratic Party and becoming a force for positive change within it, to stand up for public office and elect more progressives, Nick, something that can only be done within the Democratic Party, as if, okay, I just, I'll, I'll try to read through because if I stop at every line with this propaganda, this guy, yeah, getting. it's gonna be tough. I, I, I'm done, yeah, <laughs> to I'm not like quote. To not, quote, throw away your vote, end quote, but to help rebuild the institution that brought America Social Security, the minimum wage, the right to unionize, Medicare for all, Medicaid, free college, regulatory agencies that defend and protect the uh, environment and working class people, support for people in poverty, and that built America's first real middle class. Now, you see here how he is mixing together the Democratic Party and uh, things just happening in America. Because these things are not all it's called Social Security because the socialists brought it. That's why it's called Social Security. So there's a, you know what I mean? He's, he's, if you're not, just like what professional managerial class people do, if you don't know the information they omit information to make you think. Absolutely. So if the regular regular would be thinking, oh, the Democrats did all of this stuff? No. Do, everybody knows that Nixon is the one who, who signed into law the EPA. So what is he talking yeah. about? Environmental protection. Yeah, and remember, this, this is why is we a, say they're... Go ahead. This is why we say they, they're trying to cultivate a dumb, dumb left. Tom Hartman, Emma Viglin, Anna Kasparian... Yes. All these people want to cultivate a dumb, dumb love who don't know the stuff we are telling you on these streams. But let's, let's continue, CJ. Yes, there are co uh, corrupt and bought off politicians within the Democratic Party. At least he acknowledges that. Ever since the Supreme Court fully legalized political bribery with the Citizens United decision and its predecessor, there have been more than a few Democrats who have enthusiastically put out their hands more how about this will be more accurately stated there have been more than a few who haven't put out their name put out their hands enthusiastically for these corporate donations the most obvious and cynical ones call themselves problem solvers but nick voting for a third party candidate and thus handing elections to republicans won't solve the problem nick if anything, it will make it worse because the entire GOP has committed itself to being on the take. And as we saw with Nader and Stein, third party candidates often simply hand more power to the GOP. To find, I'm oh, sorry, try to find, for example, even one Republican who isn't benefiting from the billions in oil dollars that have flowed through the Koch network over the years and is thus willing to do something about climate change. Is he serious, Nick? Is this is this a serious this statement? He's a parody. Like he, these people are parodies of what we say they are. Like people think we are harsh on these people, and then we read their work. Like there, there needs to be way more uh, anger at these people who are trying to cultivate a dumb love because they very they play a very important role for the establishment. The establishment want nothing more than a, a weak, ineffective left. That's why the CIA funded social democrats movements, right, in the 60s. And they, they started the anti-communist movement because they wanted a weak labor movement because it was the socialists and it was the communists who won us our labor rights. So a bunch of anti-communists was funded by the CIA to create to promote social democracy, where we believe in democratic socialism because socialism in other countries and socialism brought about by the labor movement is inherently undemocratic. And then, and when when this happened, the establishment funding these idiots because they're like, thank fucking God, these people exist. So now the, the original group that they funded no, no longer exists, but all the themes and the, the, the principles that come from social democrats came from this general social democrat idea that was funded and propped up by the CIA. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's continue, CJ. Yeah, um, so this part here, let me read it again. Try to find, for example, even one Republican who isn't benefiting from the billions in oil dollars. The reason I said it's so ridiculous because 
Democrats are benefiting equally from billions of oil dollars. So what are you talking about? But I think because he inserts this part, he can say he's not lying because he's saying these Republicans are, 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 are getting oil money through this Koch network. Democrats are not getting it through the Koch network. They're getting it through uh, somewhere else. But to say this, this last part, Nick, after the Ukraine war and the Nord Stream bombing, to say this, years and thus willing to do something about climate change. What are you talking about, Tom Hartman? What about the Nord Stream pipeline, the biggest yes. eco-terrorism ever in human history? What about what about the Ukraine war? What about the 30 some odd tanks that we're sending over to Ukraine that's being made? You know how much oil that those tanks take per hour? Do you know that, Tom Hartman, for you to be able to say this stuff? It's this issue, Nick, that I have with the professional managerial class and their advocacy for the Democratic Party. The ability to close their eyes to what the Democrats are doing, which a lot of times is worse than what the Republicans are doing. What are Republicans doing to fuck up climate change right now that's worse than Democrats, Nick? Nothing. Democrats are doing... the uh, uh, IRA... 600 uh 600 feet i forget 600 yards or something like that of more land for oil drilling then we got the uh, uh mountain pipeline uh with the debt ceiling then we got the north stream so what is he talking about it, it's this duality of being able to call out one side while your side is doing worse but let me finish up the article it's almost done it's a couple of more it's yeah. one more paragraph Republican governance and their fealty to the fossil fuel industry is literally destroying America. Just the ability, boy. This is why real, listen to this right here. This is why real progressives, Nick, like <laughs> Bernie Sanders, AOC, oh, and Pramila Jayapal. You call, you're using Pramila Jayapal. Of you said Pramila Jayapal. Squad, <laughs> of all the people in the squad. Damn, I've seen Milk Toast did say people <laughs> criticize Pamela Jayapal. Oh, God. Even Milk Toast progressives that we usually would criticize. I, like, for example, I've seen like Jordan Cheriton, Kyle Kalinske, yeah. Crystal Ball, all these Milk Toast motherfuckers go after Pamela Jayapal. Tom Hartman is so far gone, he can, he's still considered her an ally. <laughs> Unbelievable. Wow. Unbelievable. And he says, so he calls uh, real progressives like Bernie Sanders, AOC, and Pamela Jayapal, Nick. They stay within. This is this is the reason the Democratic Party is better in this proof because these great progressives, Nick, they choose to stay within the Democratic Party. For progressives to take over the country, we must first take over the Democratic Party. I can't believe they're trying to run this justice Democrat strategy again after they're collapsing, Nick. I can't believe it. In other words, get inside the party and take it over. It's what hardcore conservatives did with the GOP over the past 20 years, and he's talking about the Tea Party. Go ahead, Nick. Does it surprise you that this guy was part of the NATO left? And his comments said, I didn't know that once again, I think I may have seen that something before, but I forgot about it. But Tom Harmon is, yeah, he's a big NATO leftist. Like, if you look at his channel, he covers Yeah, yeah. He's a yes. big uh, Putin derangement syndrome guy. So do you guys think it's a coincidence? That all the NATO leftists are part of the dumb dumb left who say stupid shit like this and they advocate for taking over the Democratic Party? Not at all. I don't think all, all right. the NATO Let's... left is a scourge in the Western left movements in general. And to think we used to be in coalition with them in 2016. My how things changed went to over time. It's just unbelievable. But this is the last part of it. So the next time, Nick, somebody tells us how they're going to only vote for the best candidate, you may want to give them this little civics lesson along with the phone number, website, and email for their local Democratic Party and get behind the movement to bring ranked choice voting to national elections. Why? So we can get Eric Adams through ranked choice voting? voting. We can't afford any more George W. Bushes or Donald Trumps who were both brought to us in part by Democratic-leaning voters thinking they were doing the right thing by voting for third-party candidates. And that is the disgusting end 
of this article, Nick. I, I, I mean, it's truly disgusting. But again, it, they are in absolute panic mode, Nick. Absolute panic mode that they they don't have the influence. Them just saying something. Hey, vote for Marianne Williamson. Wait, Marianne Williamson getting three percent, five percent, seven percent. Wait a minute, what's what's going on when you got two of the biggest networks, Brianna Joy Gray? You got Breaking Points, and you got Circular Talk, Nick. Those are three of the biggest sort of progressive networks, at least in the top ten. That influence enough of the progressives to get on board. Look what happened to Nina Turner. So it's been a slow drizzle, but they clearly see, oh, we don't give a fuck about this shit. You're not getting RBN and you're not getting our community. We are out of this red blue game for sure. Whether Cornell West was here or not, 